Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Excited about uh, the way we played on Saturday. Thought we played uh, probably our most complete game uh, since uh, early September, and guys are playing with a lot of confidence and, and a lot of belief. And, and I think it all starts with their preparation. We've been really doing a nice job preparing uh, Monday through Thursday, watching extra film and meeting with coaches and um, guys holding each other accountable. Uh, to make sure that we are prepared and, and then going out and having good crisp practices and and then just kind of cleaning things up on Friday and Saturday. And we're, we're playing faster. We're playing with more confidence. And obviously wins help that. Uh, um, and we've been successful the last couple of weeks. So uh, energy has been good around here. And uh, we're moving into the next week, big uh, rivalry game against uh, KU. Excited about the challenge. Uh, go on the road and, and uh, face a a good KU team that uh, we have to have great preparation and, and guys got to do a great job here early on this week to make sure we have good game plans uh, on all three phases to give ourselves a chance to be successful on Saturday. Chris, what's your history with Lance Leipold at KU? Do you guys know each other? You know, I know Lance not as well as like Coach Riley knows him really well, um, but I've seen him at different conventions and stuff, have so much respect for him for what he's done at, at uh, all, all different levels and at success and winning national championships himself and um, have so much respect for him. Uh, and everybody does in the profession because he's got a great body of work. Um, do you have any updates on uh, Joe Irvin, uh, Philip Brooks, and Malik Knowles? How yeah, doing? Joe's fine. Joe uh, practiced yesterday, felt really good. Uh, Malik and... and Philip did not practice yesterday. Uh, we're hopeful that they'll practice uh, today, if not today, tomorrow. So I, I believe both will, will be good enough to play. How much can you use Kansas's game as a, against Oklahoma as a reason or, you know, an example of how they can be dangerous? Absolutely. Um, the way you watch that game by itself and they dominated the football game. They were, they were focused. They were prepared really well. They had good plans on both sides of the ball. They, um, really shut down OU's offense and, and had their way with them defensively. And, um, you know, that, that without question was a, a, a big opportunity for them. I had a chance to win the game. And so uh, it's part of our cutups. You know, we don't watch games individually, but it's part of our cutups. And um, they did some really good things. How much have you kind of self-assessed your guys' running game? Has it had a, probably as much success as you'd like in almost a month? Um, you know, as we got as we've gotten into Big Twelve play, people have done a really nice job against us. We I thought we did a really good job this past weekend. You know, rushing for 140 or so uh, and being able to run the ball late in the game like we were to try to uh, close that game out. Uh, I think the balance has helped us. The fact that uh, we're throwing the ball, Skyler's throwing the ball for an awful lot of yards and throwing the ball to an awful lot of receivers and. Um, I think that's going to continue to help us moving forward. But uh, I think the biggest thing for us is to stay balanced and make sure that we're not just a run team or spinning it around all over the place, but to have balance like we did last week. More and more tight ends playing as well. Will Swanson and Connor Fox getting on the field. Is that kind of guys earning additional reps there or you kind of have some on pitch counts as well? Well, Will Swanson's earned the reps. He's done a really nice job uh, being on scout team most of the year. And then that open week, he did some really good things in, in good on good, so to speak. And so we wanted to keep pushing him. And then Connor Fox has been injured, missed most of fall camp, then missed uh, uh, first half of the season. And he's finally getting back healthy and gaining confidence. And Connor's an exceptional football player. He just hasn't been healthy enough. Uh, this year, I feel bad for him, but he's, he is healthy now. So he's taken more of those reps. And and to your point about pitch count, yeah, probably can keep Daniel and Nick and, and Sammy and some of those guys and, and cut their reps down a little bit to keep those guys fresh as well. Chris, when, when a guy like Felix does have a great individual game like he did, did you sense the rest of the team feeding off him, getting momentum with his dance and everything? Yeah, without question. They were excited for for Felix. He brought a lot of energy um, with each sack that he was getting. And, and uh, you could tell everybody knew uh, the kind of game he was having and people were feeding off that excitement. And uh, it didn't matter if it was an offensive guy or defensive guy, everybody knew the kind of special day that he was having. And uh, it, it was pretty fun to watch on the sideline, pretty fun to watch post game in the locker room and uh, the accolades that he's received this week are well-deserved. And um, it, it was just a, a, a fun experience for all of our guys to be a part of. I assume you saw it better on video, but um, after you do give up a safety in a game, what did you and Courtney Messingham talk about about next time you're in that situation? 
Well, we have to be able to get it out of there. Um, we uh, probably didn't ID the, the, the blocks as well as we would have liked to. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you throw the ball. I, I don't know. We, we just have to be able to punch it out of there. And we weren't able to do that. And, and part of that is just the execution wasn't, wasn't as good as it needed to be. Coach, Jason Bean offers a <clears throat> element of quarterback run game that has given teams troubles. How does that impact what you're going to do? Uh, he's really athletic, really fast. He's probably the fastest quarterback that we've seen thus far. I think Sanders is pretty comparable at, at Oklahoma State. But as far as a guy that really wants to run the ball and can stretch the field sideline to sideline and then has the speed to get around the corner or stick his foot in the ground and get north and south, uh, it's something that has us really concerned as we – begin and continue with our preparation this week we have to find ways to try to keep him you know somewhat in in the cylinder in the box a little bit and and we have to do a great job rallying on him and bringing him down because i i think he does add a dimension um running the football that um and and they try to get him the ball on the perimeter that we haven't seen yet this year and they had great success against oklahoma not very much against oklahoma state did it appear that third down conversions were a big part of that I think you got to give Oklahoma State's defense a lot of credit. I think they're really um, underrated, and I, maybe they're not underrated. I just think they're a phenomenal defense. They play fast. Uh, they know where their fits are at. They've got a bunch of veteran guys. It's a. I mean, we found out that's a tough defense to to go and try to try to crack. And and so I think when you get behind the sticks and you end up in third and long, and we were there as well, it's just hard to beat that defense. Chris, in what ways have your run fits really benefited the defense overall in the last couple of weeks? Uh, a couple of things. We're getting good disruption up front. Uh, I think that's it starts with, the, you know, the nose tackles and, and Timmy and, and, uh, and Eli. And then what we're getting out of our defensive ends, rotating all those guys. I think that's the first part of it. We're getting good disruption and good penetration uh, up front so that guys can um, be able to run and and, and know where their fits are at, but be able to get off blocks, blocks as well. And then it's still the preparation of, of kind of knowing what the bread and butter run game is. Um, we knew that against Texas Tech. We knew that against TCU. And we were able to slow that down. And I think it builds confidence in the guys when, when we're able to take away some of the bread and butter plays. And um, it's going to be the, kind of the same thing this week. We have to be able to stop the, some of their primary run game. And some of that's the quarterback. And some of that's just a really good young tailback to have. And how solid has your perimeter coverage been over the last two weeks? It's getting better. Uh, really pleased with our corner play and our safety play over the last uh, few weeks, uh, making less mental errors, um, playing really fast, playing within the confines of the defense, getting a pass rush is helping that, but we're also covering guys long enough that it's allowing our pass rush to get there. I think it's, you know, they go hand in hand, uh, us being able to rush the passers due to the fact we're covering a little bit better. Uh, we're playing, I think Coach Klanderman is doing a really good job of mixing up man and zone. We're not strictly a, a zone team or even a, a man team on certain situational uh, football situations. We, we're doing some really good things and um, got to continue it, though. I mean, that uh, for us to keep the leverage of the defense and keep the ball in front of us is important. <clears throat> Coach, with the series that you guys have pretty much dominated the last few years, how hard is it to keep your team focused on the task at hand? Uh, one, we're just trying to improve as a team. Uh, you know, we went through a rough stretch and we're trying to continue to get better. Uh, and I feel like the guys are getting better every day and it's about attacking one day at a time. And, and, and if you do that, try to give yourself a chance, go one and all. Um, we have an awful lot of Kansas kids on this football team that uh, um, this game means an awful lot to, uh, to those people. It means a lot, awful lot to our fan base, means an awful lot to the state. And it's cool because I think it means an awful lot to the guys from out of state with us having close to 60 Kansas kids somewhere in that vicinity of kids from our state, those guys from Georgia or uh, Texas or Colorado or wherever else, man, they want, they want to play their tails off for these kids from Kansas. That maybe there is a little bit more significance placed on this game just because it is a rivalry game as well. Um, potentially, but you, you can't you can't get into that stuff uh, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We got to focus on our preparation, and I think all that stuff will take care of itself with the excitement of the game as we get to Friday and Saturday. But you you know we told the guys we cannot play this game on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. We have to focus on our preparation of each of those days so that we are prepared. 
Chris, I think some people might be surprised that this is only your third season at Kansas State. You've already risen up to one of the top four most tenured coaches in the league just with all the movement that's happened. What, what's your reaction to that in the modern? I didn't realize that for starters. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's part of the business. It's the unfortunate part of the business that we all sign up for. Um, it, it, you know, it's not just the head coaches. It's a lot of support staffs and families and assistant coaches and all people that are involved. It, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, unfortunate, but I, we also understand it's part of the business, but I didn't think I would be one of the longer tenured coaches already. And in just three years, it's been hard for me to believe it's already been going on or, or in the middle of our third season here. In KU's notes, it says they've only given up a, a two sacks in the last five games. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with being just getting rid of the football pretty quickly. But obviously, they don't want King Felix to go nuts on them. So are you expecting KU to just try to get rid of it as fast as they can? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with his athleticism. You know, he avoids a lot of sacks because he's he's so athletic and he and he feels pressure. And he does a good job of getting rid of the football and avoiding negative plays. And, I, and that's a credit to him. It's a credit to their offensive staff to make sure that he is avoiding those negative plays. But uh our concern is, is him scrambling around and making plays, whether it's with his arm, which we've seen him do uh, on the run or scrambling and making big first downs, you know, it's third and six, third and seven, and nobody's open or people are covering people. And that kid takes off and runs for a first down. We've seen it, him do it in a number of games. And so, you know, that's why for us to be balanced in knowing when we can rush three, four, five, or six, uh, just to try to continue to, to change things up for him. What has Ross Elder done to earn more playing time these last few games? Just he's he just knows our system so well. He can play multiple positions. He probably split snaps last week uh, with Sincere Mason, and Sincere's playing a playing really well. We've kind of moved Sincere around at positions um, like we have Ross, and both of them are really intelligent football players. And so we're trying to give each guys equal snaps. I don't think. Um, Either one of them, we want to play 50, 60 snaps, but if we can keep both of them around 30, 35, but uh, Ross knows knows the defense really well and, and his confidence has gotten better and he's playing on a lot of special teams as well. If you look at Twitter, um, maybe Reggie Subblefield is the one that probably wants to play this game the most, uh, but um, he's also shown a lot of swagger on the field this season. What do you like about his attitude like on and off the field? Yeah, he has a lot of energy. Reggie doesn't and he cares and he's a great teammate and a guy that uh, I think our kids uh, feed off some of his energy. Uh, I think that um, uh, Reggie's appreciative of the opportunity to play Big 12 football, appreciative of the opportunity that Kansas State has given him and he's continued to improve. He's another kid that's played corner, he's played safety, he's playing a little bit of our nickel Sam backer um, and uh, I'm excited that uh, he's having a, a, a really nice super senior year when uh, I don't think in the summer Reg knew where he was going to play football at. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, most running backs seems like our people measure them by their, by their rushing yards, but with Deuce, you have to sort of evaluate a little bit different just because of the number of, of things he gives you, for yeah. example, just the maybe more all purpose yards. Yep. For us, it's all with him with all purpose yards and, and touches. We're trying to find ways we can get him the football, um, whether it's out of the out of the backfield, in the backfield, being in a slot receiver. The other thing that that we keep finding more and more is when he is in the slot, a lot of people are doubling him, which gives Daniel or uh, Philip or Landry or, or Kate or any of these wide receivers or tight ends, some more one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And um, there's some times that, that he's just been a decoy for us, but then everybody else we know has man coverage. And so I think he's, I think I know he's a, a, a nightmare to have to prepare for because we see it in practice all through spring and fall camp of we get into certain formations. It's like, okay, he's man to man on the linebacker. We're totally screwed here unless we put a safety down there to help him. And um, that's the thing that excites me is he's an unselfish player too. 
Deuce wants to win and he knows we're going to find ways to get him the football, but most importantly, he wants to win. And however that helps the team do it, he's going to do that. And, you know, last week late because of, of Phil and, and Malik being down, we had to put him back on, on punts and, and he might be the guy that goes back on punts and, and, and kickoff returns, which is, you know, another way to get the kid, the football. I don't know if opponents really, you know, Malik and Phillip are really good, but then you all of a sudden you see 22 back there. Do you want to kick it to him real badly? I don't think they probably do, but you know, he might be the guy that goes back on kicks and punts based on how Malik and Phil continue to progress. So um, I know it's a rivalry game, but also the win gets you bowl eligible. Is that something you guys discuss yet? We, we have not talked about that at all. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, I'm excited because we're continuing to improve. Um, and I told the guys that on Thursday after practice last week, after, you know, finishing up the TCU prep and just watching us and, and guys moving faster, playing faster, playing with more confidence. That's what I'm excited about. There's a lot of season left and uh, we want to just continue to get better each week. Well, uh, Chris, based off a couple of other questions you've already answered that are similar to this, I guess, uh, I know what you're maybe going to say, but we'll see if I get you to say something different. Uh, <laughs> Would it, you want is, me to? I will. Well, well, okay. it, it's just that I don't know. Is there any talk, do you think, maybe later in the week about the fact that, I mean, K-State's won 12 straight in this series and just that you don't want to be the team that yeah. hey, you go off and you were the team that lost the streak. I, I don't think you ever want to approach anything like that. Um, you know, it's out there. Do you talk about it? No, because you bring light to something. Yeah, it's just like bringing light to negative things upon your, yourself as a person or, or a program or, or a corporation. I think it's more of we have to do the things, and that's what we talked about on Saturday night in the locker room after the game. Why were we successful the last two weeks? I really believe it was the preparation we had, which gave us confidence, which also led to giving us more belief on the field. If we do those things, that's what's exciting us as a coaching staff is we're getting better each week um, and the kids are gaining more confidence and belief through our preparation. And so, um, you know, will the guys talk about some of that stuff? I, I don't know, but it's not anything that we bring up as a staff. And secondly, you, you guys are absolutely like dominating fourth quarters. You've outscored opponents like 81 to 30. Is, is there anything I think maybe specific you attribute that to? Um, no, not really. You know, we're, we're, Looking at, uh, you know, we always try to be in great condition and continue to work the game from an adjustment standpoint to make sure that we're putting our best foot forward in the fourth quarter. Uh, but, you know, we look at, you know, we got to start faster in the third quarter on offense. We, we have to start faster in the first quarter on defense. We look at more of the things that are maybe limiting us or limiting our success as a football team. Uh, and how can we shore up those things? I didn't think we were particularly really good on special teams on Saturday. I thought we were, we were okay. I was excited um, that Chris Tennant got a chance to kick a field goal um, to get him you know, a, a chance in, in that situation rather than PATs. I thought you know, our punt and kick coverage were just okay. I thought our kick return unit was just okay. We didn't really have many opportunities on punt return. They did a really nice job, but those are the things we have to continue to improve on. Just like fourth quarter, we, we've had success. Red zone, we were better in red zone defense last week. You know, can we continue to put points on the board when we get in the red zone on offense? Daniel, it seems like every time he touches the ball, a big play happens. And he has nine catches, but he averages 30 yards of reception. Uh, is getting him the ball going to be more of a focus for you guys as you move down the stretch? You know, he's really benefited from a couple of great play actions that we've done and us being able to run the ball at those specific times where maybe somebody in the back end falls asleep and he's a guy that can take it the distance. Uh, which he's done in, in two big time plays that he's had. Um, I think it's within the framework of, of our offense of how much he gets the ball, whether it's X amount of catches, you know, I, I, I there's not any secret to it um, other than the fact that we know he has that big play capability. And uh, when he gets the ball in his hands in the open field, he's, he's a tough guy to bring down and he's got great speed. Chris, when you talk about getting better, 
you know, you start fall camp back in early August is how much of a grind is it now? And how hard is it to get better in November? Well, it, it, it's really hard because guys' bodies are, are beat up and that's, we've got to do a great job of uh, making sure that we keep guys fresh during the week, as well as getting guys repetition so that we know what we're doing. Um, rotating guys, we're rotating an awful lot at certain positions at other positions. We don't have the depth to rotate, uh, but just probably doing the same thing. The one thing that I have appreciated, even when we were struggling a little bit, we didn't reinvent the wheel offensively. We didn't reinvent the wheel defensively and say, we're going to make wholesale changes on things. We, we stayed with a lot of our bread and butter. Even if that meant we threw the ball more against Texas tech, I see us line up in no back and one back sets all spring, all fall long um, for when those opportunities come that we have to use it. We do. Um, really the last two weeks on defense, we've played as base a defense as we have that we've done all spring, all fall. We're just executing it better. So if we're doing that and executing it better, then I know the guys are gaining more confidence. And you can see that because we still are going K-State ones versus K-State ones on each side of the ball every Tuesday and Wednesday for uh, whether it's 10 plays, 16 plays, something so that we can continue to get good on good against each other. You referenced Chris Tennant. That was his first action. The It hasn't been talked about as much this year as last year, but do you still have it mapped out as to those that you want to try and play for four games and get you, them that yeah. extra? Um, yes and no. It's it's so hard to keep track of right now. It really is because all those guys that, that played last year, you don't really have to count that. So uh, you know, it's it's so difficult. And Anymore, I, I think if a, if a young man can help you and help your team win, you want to have conversations with that kid, but give him the chance to play because you just never know what's going to happen to you. You know, look at Taylor Poitier. We played him last year late in the season when he started to get really good. Well, we were so excited about it. Well, then he loses this year to an injury, Khalid Duke. So if a kid's healthy, I, I think you try to play him because you just can't predict the future uh, as far as, you know, if they're going to be healthy for all three, four or five years they're here. You know, Chris, college football is kind of crazy right now, um, but you're a part of one of the longest uninterrupted series in college football, one of the old school rivalries that still remain What's the specialness in being a part of that rivalry? Well, I think it's so special for our state, and it's so uh, special for the, both fan bases to be able to say it's a it's a short drive for either team to be able to go watch their uh, watch their home team play on the road, and and um, I, I know it's really important to the to the um, coaches here. It's really important to our players in the that are from the state, and you know I, I always have our a few of our Kansas kids addressed the guys early in the week about the importance of the rivalry. I thought, you know, last, last night we had Mason Barta who has a great history in the, in the rivalry. Um, uh, Nick Allen did last night, echo Boydo, who, who doesn't say a lot, but he's a Lawrence kid and uh, how important this game is. And there's other ones that did it as well, but that that's the thing that you want some of these guys from outside the state um, to realize how great this rivalry is and how special it is to play in this game and have an opportunity because it'll be um people will be excited we're going to get KU's best shot and I think KU is going to get our best shot that's the thing that uh, you don't have to say anything special about getting ready to play this game and I'm sure Lance won't have to say anything either it's it's a fun game to be a part of one final question too from me um you enter the locker room the governor's there you're, you know, this is the only game during a regular season you're playing for a trophy. What is that moment like in that locker room when you receive that trophy? I don't, I, I can't even remember. Um, cause it was a COVID before, <laughs> you know, cause, uh, so we're just looking to prepare this week to give ourselves a chance to be successful. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in one more. I've been holding the mic. Uh, Chris, with uh, and I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought here about what I was going to ask you. I feel like an idiot. I'm trying to remember what it was. I had on my mind. Oh, it was Skyler mentioned after the game Saturday, just the confidence that comes from from winning a game and it not being like like Texas Tech, where it was a nail biter and you had to. Did, did you sense any kind of since Saturday, just like the confidence that comes from winning a game, winning convincingly, and not having to sweat out the fourth quarter? No, yeah, no, I haven't noticed anything yet. I know our guys were proud. 
uh, of how well we played for four quarters. You know, we had some slip ups here and there offensively or defensively. Um, but for the most part, we played uh, a full four quarter game and, and obviously against Texas Tech, we did not, but found a way to win. That's why I thought that game was such an important win as we didn't play our very well at all in the first half and still found a way. And then, and, you know, take that confidence and belief you had from that game and come over, come home and play uh, at home on homecoming, which is a special time uh, to win at homecoming. And, and our guys play as well as they did. I, I'm looking for crisp practices this week where there's limited mental errors, there's limited mental mistakes where our guys are, are flying around playing fast, having great communication um, and pretty locked in on their assignment. We're still making some, some, uh, mental errors and things that we can clean up. That's the thing that even when you have success, um, like we did this past week, we can still say, okay, we have to shore this phase of our offense up or this phase of our defense. And that's, it's uh, probably easier to get their attention after a win to say, you know what, we can be better. And they can see it as they watch film that we definitely can be better. Well, it's uh, Tyrone Howell's only treated as an unsportsmanlike man unsportsmanlike yeah. conduct he doesn't face any other crimes. no he misses the first half of this next game i i didn't realize that until uh sunday that uh, they let us know that it's probably similar to a targeting penalty um so he'll miss the first half of this game last thing what are your impressions of devin neal uh key running back yeah, he's a he's a tremendous football player to play as a true freshman. I got to know Devin through the recruiting process and, and uh, so much respect for he and his, and his family. Um, great, great young man. And, and uh, uh, I'm excited for, for his success that he's having as a, as a true freshman. And hopefully we can limit that success this weekend, but uh, great kid, great family. All right, thanks everyone.